So you enjoyed Wingspan and you're ready for more of a challenge. You picked up the European expansion or you're thinking about it, but you don't know how to play. Don't you worry, I've got you. I'm going to teach you how to play multiplayer and solo. Let's get right into it. First of all, an overview. In this first expansion to Wingspan, there's an increase in the scope of the world since the first was North and South America. Now it includes the varied birds of Europe. These birds all have a variety of new powers, including round end powers. These are powers that increase interaction between players, or if you're solo, just increases challenge. Birds that can cover multiple spaces to make future actions more profitable, and birds that benefit from the excess cards and food that just went to waste previously. The European birds are designed to be shuffled into the original deck of cards and the cards of the other, the Oceania and Asian expansion. Word of caution here, things can get crazy if you choose to combine everything. The European expansion here, it also includes an additional tray for storing the growing collection of birds. My goodness, it's getting big, as well as 15 purple eggs, some extra food tokens, new end of round goals, and bonus cards, and of course a score pad for multiplayer and solo. That brings us to setup. Go ahead and take all of your European expansion cards, just like this, boom, and your original Wingspan cards. I know there's more that just represents. And congratulations, shuffle them all together. I'm not going to do it. It makes a mess. Shuffle them all together. The game's designed to be balanced if they are all shuffled. If you ever want to separate them out, there's an EE at the bottom of the European expansion. That's how you can pull them back out if you ever want to. Next, take all of your European expansion purple eggs, mix them with all of the wingspan eggs. There's nothing special, it's just a lot prettier. Take all the new European expansion food tokens, mix them in with the base game tokens. There's nothing special, just more food. Take your European expansion bonus tokens, mix them up with the base game bonus tokens, boom, 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 and you're ready. If you ever want to separate these out, they're marked by EE for European expansion. Feel free to use the scorecards that you like. These ones are pretty. Set up the game as normal. When you get to setting up for the round card here, it's recommended for the European expansion that you use the green side. The game doesn't work quite as well on the blue side. Also, you'll want to use the end of round reference that comes with the European expansion as it reminds you to do round end bird powers. If you need a reminder on how to set up the base game or how to play, just check out my how to play wingspan video. I'll link it in the description below and you're going to be all set. During setup, take the two Automa bonus cards, the ones that mention the Automa, and put them to the side. Take the remaining five European expansion bonus cards and mix them in, shuffle them in with the base game deck. If you ever want to separate them back out, just look for that EE European expansion, expansion in the bottom corner. Just as a reminder on this empty board, make sure at the end of every round that you keep the action cubes exactly where they are until you're done with scoring. If you follow this end of round reference, you'll be fine. European expansion introduces new bird powers. The other bird powers, brown and pink and white, work the same as the base game. For teal, these are round end. So this bonus only happens after all turns have been played. All cubes are on the board. Then... You follow the end of round goals and you score the round end bird powers first. You get to do that in any order. If you have multiple end of round goals here, European Expansion introduces this teal power. So the pink, the white, and the brown from the base game work exactly the same. Teal are round end goals. So you only get to use these once all turns, all cubes have been placed. If at the end of the round you have multiple teal powers, you can score them in any order that you like to benefit you most. So for example, if we got to the end of the round and we wanted to score this one first, the Dunnock, at the round end, choose one other player for each action cube on their field, lay one egg on this bird. Let's say the opponent had two action cubes on the field right there. Well, good. I'd get to lay one egg on this bird and another egg. I would do the same with the next two teal powers. These are not to be confused with pink powers that get played between turns. These are end of round. There's also something unique when you see the food cost of a bird of any color that has an asterisk as shown here. The asterisk means if you read down here, there's an alternative to paying the food cost. For example, when played for each mouse, in this bird's cost, that's up here, you may pay one bird card from your hand instead. If you do, tuck the paid 
bird card behind this hand. So if I had these three bird cards, instead of three mice, I could pay one and put it in here. I could pay two and put it in here. I could pay three if I wanted, or I could pay with a mouse and two cards, any combination. Though you certainly won't need it in your first few plays, there's a wonderful appendix in the rule book that goes through every single bird power by category. You do not need this. It's just if you're advanced and you really want to look. That takes us through multiplayer. How do you play it solo? For the solo mode, there are two bonus cards that are specific to the Atoma. You do not have to use these, but you now have the option, instead of randomly selecting bonus cards from the base game, you can select one of these two, either randomly or your choice for the Atoma. Be careful. Remember that the Automabond Society card from the base game is going to make these particularly difficult. So make sure that you are up for the challenge. Or simply don't use this in your plays. In the European expansion, there are two new Automa end of round goals. These tell you what to do with the European expansion goal tiles. You might have a combination of European expansion goal tiles and base game tiles, in which case you would need all of these as your reference, the base game and the expansion. Right now, I just have laid out the European expansion to show the example. So you continue the, the Atoma solo mode, same as with the base game, but when you get to end of round scoring, if I have a European expansion tile like this one, the amount of food of any type in personal supply. Well, the Atoma doesn't collect food, so how does that work? Well, we look on our reference here, and we are in round one, so we make sure that we flip this every round as it changes. So for round one, number of food in personal supply would be two plus the amount of cubes. So that would mean the Atoma would have five food in personal supply. So if we had four food, then we would be in second place and they would be in first place. And they would put their cube there and we would put our cube in second, removing the rest. Use this reference for all of the 10 different end of round goals for the European expansion, if any show up here. And again, make sure at the end of every round that you flip it over. So you're following round two, and then round three, and finally, of course, round four. When you see a negative, such as in round one, if we had the birds with tucked cards, I don't think we have that one out. Do we have birds worth less than four would be starting at a minus one. So if they had three cubes placed here, but it was minus one, then that would mean they have a total of two. We would have to have more than two in order to win first place. There are steel powers in the European expansion. Like with the little owl, it says, steal one rodent mouse from another player's supply and cash it on this bird. They gain one dice from the bird feeder. Well, how do you do that with the Atoma? Very simple. You are allowed to steal only if they have cubes on the current round. So let's say it's round two. They have two cubes. Don't touch the cubes. Since they have two cubes, you are allowed to steal. So you take one rodent from the supply. Since the Atoma player does not have food, take it from the supply, follow the instructions, cash it on the little owl. Any reference to the Atoma player gaining something is ignored. It says they gain one dice from the bird feeder, speaking of the opponent. The Atoma gains nothing, you can ignore that sentence. If we were in round two and the Atoma had no cubes, we would not get to steal one rodent. We would simply have to pass on this ability. There are certain round end teal power goals that refer to another player. When you're playing solo, how do you score that? Well, this one, the Carrion Crow says, choose any one player, including yourself, Cash one rodent from the supply on this bird for each predator that player has. Well, obviously they don't have those, so what do we do? Well, they have the amount of what's being asked for in cubes on the round. So let's say we're in round three. This says, cash one rodent from the supply on this bird for each predator that that player has. So this would count as three predator birds that they have. In that case, I could cash one, two, three rodents on here. If they only had two, I could cash two rodents. If they had two and I have 
three predators, then I could choose myself and still get the three rodents. Congratulations, y'all. Now you know how to play Wingspan, the European expansion, both with your family, your friends, and also solo. If you have questions, put it in the comments. If this was helpful, what helps me to keep making these videos is getting new subscribers. So if you enjoyed this, please be sure to subscribe. I give all kinds of tutorials, top 10 lists, fun challenges and discussions, or just be sure to like if you appreciate it. Coming up soon is the Oceania expansion. Thanks for hanging out with me. I love y'all. I'll see you next time.